everybody, your host is Colette here with another episode of Trauma Center Under the Knife 2, brought to you by MuchGage.ca. In the last episode, we found out that in the that the young Dr. Toba made a novice mistake, hence the name of my last episode. And anyway, he was hurt on himself and was sulking. So, with some encouragement from Sylvia, the counselor, and a good kicking in the earth, he was able to stop sulking and assist the Dr. Stars and Nurse Angie. So, let's see what else is going to happen today in this episode, shall we? Anyway, like I told you in the last episode, that with the gold bar, as you see right here, indicates an operation into the storyline. So, let's go and see how we can do this now. Hey there! Okay. Ah, oh, here's Sylvia, as we were just talking about her. Angie, are you here? Hey, Sylvia, what can I do for you? I'm leaving for the administration office. Would you like me to pick anything up for you? Hmm, let me think. Oh, it would be nice if we had some sweets for the kids. You're right, Daddy's nice. Hmm. Anyway, okay, I'll pick up some candy then. What about for the doctors? Don't even, bo don't even bother. They're too busy. Sounds like Dr. Tulp is doing just fine then. Well, see you later. Be careful out there. It's a dangerous place. <laughs> An hour later. Wow, that was a quick hour. <laughs> cool, I'm finally done with my rounds. Welcome back, Dr. Tulba. Oh, well, thank you, Miss Thompson. What are you up to? I'm writing my, writing my report for uh, Caddis or Caduceus, whatever you call it, I don't know. <laughs> so I guess it's Caduceus or Caduceus, <laughs> USA. Let's see. Wow, sounds like a lot of work. I'm on top of it, but that's not necessarily true for everyone. Is that so? Well, seems like here that the stall is a very messy person. Hey there, Angie. Uh, was today the deadline for our report? That's correct. Good thing you got a really good nurse because he would be lost without her. That that's not good. I've been so busy lately that I haven't even started. That's what happens when you procrastinate. Oh, was it really procrastinating? Oh, yes, you were. <laughs> You're always procrastinating! Always! <sighs> you never learn! He's a guy! You're never gonna learn! It's like talking to the wall! Hello, wall! How many times do I have to tell you to start shaping up on your office work? He got a great hand when it comes to doing operations, but office work? He's not so great at. Yeah, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, I'll try harder on the next one. Jeez! <laughs> Here, I wrote your part of the report, but look it over before we send it out. Yes, boss! <laughs> you did it for me? Thank you. Well, you're amazing, Angie. You're a lifesaver even outside the OR. Thank you. This will be the last time. Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, of course. Oh, here we go. Dr. Stiles, a patient urgently requiring care has been carried in. Why would you say this is just an emergency? <sighs> what happened? The car that the NGO workers were in a hit a landmine. Ouch. The two sitting in the front died instantly. But the woman sitting in the back survived. However, she's in critical condition. A woman? Who is she? Uh-oh. It's Miss Warnberg. That's Can't Sylvia! Me. Wow! No! <gasps> Why Sylvia? Oh my! Please, Doctor! That's just all please save her! No, we're just gonna let her die! Yes, we're gonna save her! Gee! Okay, explain the patient's condition. 
The refractor's on the lower left of her ribcage, of course. The bone fragments have pierced her spleen and are causing abdominal hemorrhaging. Of course it has. And you're gonna know that this operation is almost similar as the very first operation that we did. And you'll find out how, because it's like almost like a piece of jigsaw puzzle. Almost same thing, only for just a little bit more complicated. Landmine. There's so many of those them that still need to be removed and disposed of. Sylvia, why did it? Angie. Angie, she bum. <laughs> yes, doctor. We have to concentrate on the task at hand. We need to be strong for Sylvia's sake. I want to save her and you too, right? Then let's try to stay, stay focused on the operation. Yes, doctor. I apologize. Okay, now she got her composure. There are two objectives in this operation. Retrieve bone fragments, treat the spleen, and reform the rib cage. Let's see. Well, we retrieved bone fragments in the first operation, and we uh, reformed like the bones. Like so, it's just the same thing. Only for this time, it's abdominal hemorrhage and it's in the spleen and stuff like that. So, let's give Sylvia everything we can, Doctor Styles. There's no time. Let's begin. Let's begin the operation, shall we? See if I can maintain my S streak. And of course, five minute time this limit. Good. Okay, the damage to this plane is severe. See? Okay. And because her vitals are going to drop, which means we're going to need a defibrillator. Or a defib, as I call it. The is in danger. Okay, she's in cardiac Where arrest. Let's resuscitate her now. The pedals of the defibrillator appear whenever a patient goes into cardiac arrest. Well, we all know that. So, because she's in fibrillation right now, so we're going to have to Doctor, keep, keep fib her. Now, what you do is you, you hold up until you reach that little green thing right there. Like, oh, that was too much. Too little. There, we just resuscitate her. Now, first thing's on my list, give her antibiotic gel. And it'll go up higher if you go into where the infected area is. Now, we'll drain it, drain up the blood. And you see that this... Now, you see that this wound is too large that we're going to need... Of course, we're going to need forceps. So, take the forceps, close them up, the sutures are ready. use the sutures, use the forceps, take the forceps, careful when you're taking it out, this is the and good. another injury just came in, so, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take out all the bone fragments first, you don't necessarily have to do that, but I choose to do it because it's easier for me. But and increasing her vitals while I'm at it. Nothing wrong with that, I suppose. Now, next, suture up. Come on! Use there you the go. Forceps. Now, take the forceps. Doctor. Oops. See! See what you made me do? You made me miss. That's not right. Now. It's a very delicate operation. Wait. Now, and then the finals just dropped again. 
So of course she went into fibrillation, so I'm gonna have to get the defib again. <sighs> there you go. And of course I knew that I was missing a new piece of the rib. Use the drain. Drain her in. Use the border stand. Yeah. Her vitals are a warning, so. Healthcare professionals is to save your ass, not to kiss it. So guess what? Yeah. <laughs> oh come on! Okay, I just got an A. I can do way much better than that. Ugh. Oh well, maybe I'll get an S on my next operation. Am I alive? Well, it's amazing how someone can actually stand up after just op operating on him. Thank you. finish the storyline so I think I'll probably have enough time to do another one because it's only 12 minutes 13 seconds into uh, the episode okay let's start and of course we have another operation Yeah. So, okay, we have the same problem as always. We never seem to have enough medical supplies. I see. I wish I could help, but the army is short on gear, too. Sorry. It's alright. I understand your situation. So, what brings you here tonight? I'm on patrol. Three days ago, the camp at the uh, girl, you know, was attacked by anti government guerrillas. <laughs> I see. They were extremists from the Rezu tribe. The bastards. How long do they plan on drawing at this war? Mm. Must be something that they're fighting over, I suppose. <laughs> and of course, Adele's explaining what happened. Anyway, the Rezu tribe's grudge against the Del, Del tribe runs deep. You were the new doctor I met the other day, right? From the Rezu? Yes, and you're the Del tribe. My people believe that they've been exploited by your tribe for many years. Still, there's no excuse to go around committing mass murder, is it? But that's just a handful of extremists. I'm not up to start a fight, so let's just change subject. Yes, please. Anyway, doctor, you should know that this area has become more dangerous. What the? Huh? Soldier! We're under attack! Oh, went out? Uh, that's supposed to be 
So it just ain't one attack. Oh well. They must be those gorillas. Doctor, please, Doctor, please take over. Let's see. Doctor Stannis. Too dangerous here. Let's hide behind that cabin. Good idea. Fire at will. Don't let those gorilla bastards get near the camp. What's going on? Angie. How'd you get down? <gasps> ah! Are you alright, Angie? Uh, I'm okay. What in the world is going on? We've been, uh, been attacked by gorillas. Lower your head, Miss Thompson. <gasps> ah! Keep firing! Damn it! We can't go anywhere like this! It would be safer for us to just stay here, Dr. Styles. But if those gorillas get any closer... What then? If that happens, run for your lives! That's comforting, your voice. Hmm. Wait, are they leaving? The gunfire isn't as loud. You're right. They must have retreated. Of course they retreated. Whew. Then we're gonna be okay. I'm so relieved. Doctor, Doctor Styles, come quickly. We've got some wounded here. They need your help. Understood. On my way. Let's see here. Okay, first one. Our patient has been shot in the chest. There is one bullet wound. This isn't good. Okay, blood pressure and pulse are both decreasing. Hemorrhaging is severe and condition is critical. So that means we're gonna have to use the dip-fib again. Huh, but then again, we can't really, because there's a bullet. Anyway, extract the bullet lodged in the heart. Because of the wound's location, the patient could go into cardiac arrest. Please be careful, doctor. Got it. Let's see. Of course, you gotta keep an eye on the electrocardiogram, so. Get started on this one. Let's begin the operation. Let's begin the operation. Okay, follows only 30. So, right now, use the four percent.
course. Operation Master Sergeant. I told you I was gonna get an S in my next one. <sighs> Phew! We managed to treat everyone somehow. Yes, I can't believe so many people got wounded in such a short period of fighting. War really is dreadful. War, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Where are we going? Operating five people in a row was intense, but I managed to get it through somehow. You treated five patients in that span of time? Well done. If there's one thing I'm confident about, it's my speed. That's all thanks to a great mentor. I think your smooth talking skills are improving right along with your medical prowess. <laughs> hey. But the Toba, I heard that there was children spotted along with those gorillas. Is that true? Yes, they had child soldiers. I operated on one who had been forced into service. Those child, those children are kidnapped from their villages during guerrilla raids. They're pretty much brainwashed and then used as human shields by the soldiers. This can't be. But how can they be so cruel? Miss Thompson, I'm afraid that is the reality of life in my country. Okay, now I'm gonna stop here because it's only it's like 21 minutes and 54 seconds here. So, anyway, um, next we're gonna conquer the fever and do with that. Anyway, uh, take care, everyone, and stay tuned and watch my videos. Okay, ciao.